Thank you for choosing Chamberlain. Today, we'll show you how to assemble and install a Chamberlain Belt Drive Garage Door Opener in a garage with a sectional door and a finished ceiling. These steps apply to all recent models of Chamberlain Belt Drive Garage Door Opener, so your product may appear different. This video is intended for demonstration purposes only. Please consult the manual for complete instructions and safety information. For easy, step-by-step, -step, interactive 3D instructions, download the Built app. Before we do anything else, head over to the App Store or Google Play and get the latest MyQ app installed. When you search for MyQ, several apps will appear. Choose the app with this logo, called MyQ Garage and Access Control. Install that one and follow the directions to sign up for an account or sign in if you already have an account. Check if the installation manual or user's guide that came with your garage door opener provide QR codes for the built and MyQ apps. Scanning those QR codes will take you to the latest built and MyQ apps in the App Store or Google Play. If you already have built and or MyQ app accounts, the QR codes will take you directly to the setup flows for your garage door opener within those apps. You'll be able to use the MyQ app to close the door without being in the line of sight of the door. This unattended close feature is only to be used with sectional garage doors. Let's talk about installation. Here's what we're going to cover. Things you'll need to check before you get started. Assembling the opener. Installing the opener. Completing the electrical and wiring connections. And making the necessary adjustments, including testing the safety reversal system and the protector system. Use the progress bar at the bottom of the screen to track where you are in the installation process. Before you begin, completely uninstall and remove your old garage door opener, if there is one. Also, disable any locks and remove any ropes that are connected to the garage door. Let's get started with the pre-installation checklist. Check the balance of the garage door. Start with your garage door in the closed position. Lift the door three to four feet off the ground. Release the door. If balanced, it should stay in place, supported entirely by its springs. Raise and lower the door to check for sticking or binding. If your door binds, sticks, or is out of balance, contact a trained door systems technician before you install this opener. An unbalanced garage door might not reverse when required. Never try to loosen, move, or adjust garage door springs, cables, pulleys, brackets, or their hardware, all of which are under extreme tension. Be sure to close the door when finished with these checks. Measure the height of your garage door. All Chamberlain garage door openers are provided with a rail designed for a 7-foot tall garage door. If your door is taller than 7 feet and up to 10 feet tall, you will need a rail extension kit. Your garage door should also have horizontal and vertical reinforcements already installed. These provide support and help prevent damage to the door. Let's unbox the garage door opener and lay out the parts. It's a good idea to rest the motor unit on protective cardboard so it doesn't get scratched. Here's what comes in the box. The motor unit, the rail, the trolley assembly, the belt, the header bracket and door mounting bracket, the safety reversing sensors with mounting brackets, the control panel, remote controls, and the other parts including hardware. This model also includes a battery. Refer to your manual for a list of tools and additional items you may need. The support bracket for mounting the motor unit to the ceiling is not provided. Place the garage door opener on protective packing material about 10 feet away from the garage door. To assemble the rail, Carefully remove the door arm and hanging bracket parts. Lay out the rail sections on the floor with the tapered ends pointing toward the garage door. The front rail section with the window goes on the door end of the rail. Make sure the cutout rail tab is on top. Slide the tapered ends of the rails into the larger ends. Placing the rail on top of packing material and the motor unit will help with assembly. At the motor unit end of the rail, insert a screwdriver through the hole in the second rail section. Make sure the inner trolley is inside the outer trolley. Make sure the release lever is pointed toward the motor unit and slide the trolley assembly onto the rail over to the screwdriver. 
Install the cover protection bolt in the rail section closest to the motor unit, making sure not to over tighten. Insert the U bracket with the flat side down. Push firmly until it reaches the stops. If you need a little help, place a piece of old 2x4 against a solid surface and brace the rail against it. Then tap the rail with a mallet. Remove the bolts from the top of the motor unit and use them to attach the U bracket on the rail. Hand tighten the bolts. Do not use power tools. Remove the tape from the idler pulley and make sure there is grease in the center hole. On the rail closest to the garage door, feed the belt through the window. Insert the idler pulley. Make sure the rib side of the belt is in contact with the pulley. Secure the pulley in place with the provided hardware. Use a flathead screwdriver to lift the cutout rail tab to a 90 degree angle. Hook the belt onto the trolley. Pull the other end of the belt until the trolley rests against the screwdriver. Extend the belt and wrap it around the sprocket on the motor unit. Make sure the belt is not twisted and the rib side is in contact with the sprocket. Remove the spring trolley nut from the threaded shaft. Slide the threaded shaft through the hole in the trolley. Attach the spring trolley nut to the threaded shaft with only a couple of turns. The threaded shaft needs to reach the belt. Connect the belt to the threaded shaft using the master link hardware. If there's any slack in the belt, finger tighten the spring trolley nut. Do not use any tools. Remove the screwdriver from the rail. To set the spring, insert a flathead screwdriver against the nut ring slot and turn the nut with a wrench until the spring releases and snaps the nut ring against the trolley. Complete the assembly by installing the sprocket cover. Your garage door opener is ready to install. The header bracket will be centered over the garage door and fastened to a structural support. Do not attach the header bracket over drywall. If there is a header bracket already properly installed, use it if possible. Raise the garage door to the highest point of travel and make a mark two inches above this. Using a level is helpful. With the door closed, place the bottom of the header bracket on your mark and make marks for pilot holes. Be sure to refer to the installation instructions for the correct drill bit size. Install the header bracket using the provided hardware. This garage already has support brackets installed. If a properly installed support bracket is not already in place, you must supply one along with the hardware for fastening it to the structural supports in the ceiling. It's time to place the assembled garage door opener into position. It's easiest if you have a helper to assist. Position the opener so the end of the rail reaches the header bracket. If the door spring is in the way, raise the motor unit onto a temporary support and have a helper hold it securely in place. Connect the rail to the header bracket using the clevis pin and secure in place with a ring. Open the garage door and place a 2x4 under the rail. This will put the motor unit at the proper height for connecting to the support bracket. Put on protective gloves when handling the hanging brackets. Measure the distance from the support bracket to the garage door opener. 
measure and cut the hanging bracket. Connect the hanging bracket to the garage door opener and the support bracket. Remove the 2x4 and lower the garage door. Thread the emergency release rope through the handle and tie it off. Then, install the emergency release rope to the trolley, making sure the handle is at least 6 feet off the ground. Cut off the excess rope and carefully melt the end to prevent fraying. If your garage door is made of lightweight material such as fiberglass, aluminum, or light steel, make sure both horizontal and vertical reinforcements are installed before attaching the door bracket. The door bracket will be centered under the header bracket. It attaches to the vertical reinforcement on the top panel using the provided hardware. If there is a door bracket already properly installed, it's easier to use that. The outer trolley needs to be close to the garage door so you can install the door arm. If you need to move it, disconnect the trolley by pulling down on the emergency release handle and slide the trolley over to the door. The door arm consists of a curved section and a straight section. Use the provided clevis pins to connect the straight door arm to the trolley and the curved door arm to the door bracket. Align the curved and straight arms so they appear to be positioned between 1 and 2 o'clock. Use the provided hardware to connect the two parts. Next, install the door control following the directions in your installation instructions. Install the door control within sight of the door at a minimum height of 5 feet (1.5 meters) above floors, landings, steps, or any other adjacent walking surface where small children cannot reach and away from the moving parts of the door. Route the door control through the hole in the top of the motor unit. Wire the door control to the motor unit by inserting the white wire in the white connector and the red wire in the red connector. Place the warning label on the wall near the door control. Your garage door opener comes equipped with safety reversing sensors, which are to be mounted on each side of the garage door at floor level. Safety reversing sensors are to be installed no more than 6 inches from the floor. Snap the sensor bracket onto the door track. Then, mount the safety sensor using the provided wing nut and bolt. If your garage is not pre-wired for safety reversing sensors, follow the instructions for routing the wires that are attached to the sensors. Since this garage already has wiring in place, we'll follow the directions for connecting the safety reversing sensors to the existing wiring. Route the wires through the opening in the top of the motor unit. Insert the white wire in the white connector and the black wire in the gray connector. Plug the garage door opener into the electrical outlet, but do not run the opener. Now, check the safety reversing sensors. The sending sensor amber LED should be on solid. If the amber LED is off, make sure the garage door opener has power. Then, make sure the wiring connection at the sensor and at the garage door opener is not broken or shorted. The receiving sensor's green LED should be on solid. If the receiving sensor green LED is off, make sure the wiring connection at the sensor and at the garage door opener is not broken or shorted. If the sensor is flashing, make sure there is nothing obstructing the sensor and make sure it is properly aligned. To align the sensor, loosen the wing nut and adjust the sensor position until the LED glows solid. Re-engage the trolley by pulling back on the emergency release rope. Lift the door until the trolley clicks into place. Programming travel limits tells the opener where to stop when moving the door up or down. The buttons for programming travel are located next to the wiring connectors.
openers manufactured starting in 2022 have a step saver setup label. If your opener has this label, follow these steps. Otherwise, watch the section of the video for openers that do not have this label. There are three buttons you'll use. The up button, the down button, and the adjustment button. Press and hold the adjustment button until the up button begins to flash. The lights on the safety reversal sensors will turn off because they will be temporarily disconnected during programming. Now, press and hold the up button until the door is in the desired up or open position. To prevent damage to vehicles, be sure the fully open door provides adequate clearance. Once the door is in the fully open position, press and release the adjustment button. The garage door opener lights will flash twice and the down button will start flashing. Now, press and hold the down button until the door is in the desired down or closed position. Once the door reaches the correct closed position, press and release the adjustment button. The garage door opener lights will flash twice. Programming travel is now complete. The safety reversal sensors will reconnect and their lights will turn back on. The opener will beep and the lights will flash when it enters a force sensing operation. The door will automatically open and close. Then the opener will beep three times, letting you know the force setting is complete. If the garage door opener lights flash five times, then programming has timed out and travel limits have not been set. You'll need to restart the process again. For products that do not have the Step Saver Setup label, follow these steps. Press and hold the adjustment button until the up button begins to flash. Now press and hold the up button until the door is in the desired up or open position. To prevent damage to vehicles, be sure the fully open door provides adequate clearance. Once the door is in the fully open position, press and release the adjustment button. The garage door opener lights will flash twice and the down button will start flashing. Now press and hold the down button until the door is in the desired down or close position. Once the door reaches the correct close position, press and release the adjustment button. The garage door opener lights will flash twice and the up button will begin to flash. Now press and release the up button. When the door travels to the open position, the down button will begin to flash. Press and release the down button. The door will travel to the closed position. Programming the travel for your garage door opener is now complete. Anytime you make any adjustments, the safety reversal system must be tested. To test the safety reversing sensors, open the garage door. Place an object that is at least 12 inches high, such as a box, in the path of the garage door so that it obstructs the safety sensor. Use your remote control or control panel to try to close the garage door. The door will not close and the garage door opener lights will flash 10 times. When the safety sensor is obstructed, the green LED will flash. If the garage door opener closes the door while the safety sensor is obstructed and the sensors are installed no higher than 6 inches above the floor, call for a trained door systems technician. You must test the safety reversal system of your garage door opener every month. You must also perform this safety reversal test after making any adjustments to your garage door opener. The door must reverse on contact with a one and a half inch high object or a two by four laid flat on the floor. To test the safety reversal system, open the garage door. With the door fully open, place a one and one half inch board or a two by four laid flat on the floor, centered under the garage door. Press the remote control or wall-mounted door control to close the door. The door should stop and reverse upon contact with the 2x4. The door returns to the fully open position. The opener beeps and lights flash slowly five times. If the door reverses, remove the board. The test is complete. If the door stops and does not reverse, check that your garage door opener is installed properly. Refer to the manual for detailed instructions. Here are some key installation points to check to ensure your system successfully passes the safety reversal test. 1. Verify the garage door is properly reinforced. 
Some garage doors may have pre-installed reinforcement, which can be verified by contacting the door manufacturer. 2. Verify the header and door brackets are installed in the proper location. 3. Verify the curved and straight arm are assembled correctly. If everything is installed properly, it may be necessary to increase the down travel in order to get a properly reversing safety system. Go back and watch the travel adjustment section of this video again, or consult the manual. After adjusting the travel, you'll need to perform the safety reversal test again. If the garage door opener continues to fail the safety reversal test, contact a trained door systems technician. It's time to install the battery. Always wear safety glasses and gloves when handling the battery. The battery compartment door opens from the side. Locate the red and black wires. Connect the black wire to the black connector on the battery. Connect the red wire to the red connector on the battery. Close the battery compartment door. On the other side of the opener, open the compartment. The battery status LED is located next to the yellow Learn button. As your battery charges, the light will flash green. When the battery is fully charged, the light will be solid green. Congratulations on installing your Chamberlain garage door opener. Don't forget to complete the setup in the MyQ app. Watch our other video for a walkthrough. Thank you for choosing Chamberlain. For more information, visit support.chamberlaingroup.com.